Well, hello and welcome to Shade Tree Mechanic. You know, a smoky engine and oil consumption isn't an uncommon problem. And many times a mechanic may tell you that you need an engine overhaul. Well, it may be nothing more than bad valve seals. The question is, is how do you know and how do you check it for sure? Good question. How do you know is you do some diagnostic work. You get these little engines here and they've got a lot of oil circulating throughout them. Of course, you want to seal the oil from the combustion chamber. And that's done with the rings and the valve stem oil seals. And we've got a 22R four-wheel drive Toyota pickup truck. It's got a lot of miles on it. It's been worked hard. This is a very common engine. And this truck here, you know, when you drive it hard or you start it up in the morning, it smokes out the tailpipe. One of the things we're going to do to diagnose this, we're going to use a cylinder leakage gauge like this. Now, this cylinder leakage gauge is used like a compression tester, only use compressed air. And we'll determine whether we've got some weak rings. And if we don't have weak rings, most likely we're going to have oil going by the valve stem seal because that's the weakest link in these little engines. You're right, Sam. You know, what we have here is a typical 2.2 liter uh, Chrysler engine. This is an overhead cam engine. This is what you'll find almost all these type of engines. The cam is located up here on the top. Right here are the rocker arms. These are the springs. And inside the springs around the valve guide is the seal. Now on the other side, you'll find the lifter. These are hydraulic lifters. Now they're designed to help maintain the proper clearance between the cam lobe and the lifter. Oil is pumped up through the uh, camshaft that lubricates these bearings here. And of course, oil is then pumped up through the, uh, this galley here, which pumps oil into the lifters. Now, oil is also squirted on the cam lobe. So there's a lot of oil flowing up here on the top of this engine, which makes it even more important to have good valve seals. That's right. And what we've got here is we've got four exhaust ports. And in these exhaust ports, we should have nothing but exhaust carbon. But if you look at number three, this thing's loaded with oil. This cylinder's pumping oil, which is probably why this engine was taken out. There's <laughs> good reason for it right. to come out. And most likely, I mean, it's possible, but most likely you don't have all the rings bad. So when you've got one cylinder pumping oil, you probably have a bad valve stem oil seal. Now, it's hard to see these inside the spring, but I've got some parts in the fire department, and I can show you a good example. You know, these little overhead cam engines run at high revs. They generate a lot of heat, and they generate a lot of power. The valve seal tends to be the weakest link in these engines, so you need good ones. You know, I know I've got back here what I want to show you someplace in this pile of stuff this is uh, neatly cataloged here we go i got a cylinder head and now in the toyota land cruiser uh, parts department let's see, yep this will do what i've got here is a cylinder head this is off a of toyota also overhead cam aluminum head there's a cam on top and of course we've got two valves in this that's all that's left in this head and the valves and the springs here and of course if you look inside the combustion chamber we've got the face of the valves right there and this is where the oil is getting if it's getting by the rings or getting by the valve stem oil seals. Now, what I've got here is I've got a valve and a guide and a seal. This is your valve, there's the face of the valve, this is the stem, and the guide does just what its name implies. It's pressed into the head, and the valve fits up inside it, and of course there has to be a certain fit there too, and it guides the valve up and down. Then the oil seal, which is like a shedder, or sometimes called a shedder, sometimes use an O-ring, fits down on the top of the guide, and as the valve goes up and down, I'll pull this off of here. This, this, the uh, valve stem seal actually wipes the valve stem. See, it's got a good tight fit when it's in good shape. Now, changing the valve stem oil seals, taking the springs off with the head and the bench, that's a piece of cake. Doing it with the head on the car, now that's another story altogether. Right about that, Sam. You know, you got to do that once in a while, or if you have to do that once in a while, you need the right tools. That's what this is. This is a valve spring compressor. Now, there are various different types. You'll have to find out what you need for your particular vehicle, but without that, it's almost an impossible job. And you need some compressed air, too. That's also true. Well, what do you think? Do you think we ought to get the Toyota in the garage and see if we can make a non-smoker out of a smoker? Let's check it out, find out what's wrong with it. All right, we're going to take a short break. Stay with us. I'm going to clean up the parts of the Okay. Problem. Vehicles with mechanical lifters should have the valve clearances checked every 30,000 miles. Check the owner's manual for your car's specific recommendations. Well, welcome back to Shade Tree Mechanic. As you can see, we've got the hood off of our Toyota here. It makes it easier for you folks at home to see what we're doing. Of course, it's a lot easier for Sam and I to work on the engine, too. We've also removed the air cleaner. And here's what we're talking about. It fits right here on the carburetor. Mounts just about like this. Now, on the bottom side of it, you can see there's plenty of hoses and lines here. Make sure you mark them and remember where they go so you can put them in the right spot when you put this thing back together. Also a good idea to have a service manual handy while you're doing this type of work. Good point. 
You know, what I've removed here is the distributor cap and uh, spark plug wires because we're going to remove all the spark plugs. I've just taken the number one spark plug out. What's it look like? And sure enough, oh, look, there's deposits all over it. Take a look at that real close. a little on the grungy side, yeah. I'd say. That's, that's a sure sign. Yep, it's got some oil ash deposit on it. And that's an indication that it is burning a certain amount of oil. You can't tell a lot about an engine, though, by looking at just one spark plug. You need to pull them all out, lay them all together, and then look at it. Then you can get a good idea of what's happening in the, in the engine. Also, remember what spark plug comes from one cil uh, what cylinder, too. That's right. It's a good point. Mark them, put them in the order, and do this just like a compression check. Warm the engine up, take all the spark plugs out. How you coming? Got it? Got it out. All right, before. let's take a look at that plug sticker in here. Well, now you can get an idea of what we're talking about. This is the number one spark plug. You can see the oil ash deposit on it. Number two is relatively clean. It's just got some wear and a certain amount of deposit on it. Number three has got is burn out, but it's got some oil ash deposit, not much. And number four has got a little bit of deposit. So the engine's definitely burning some oil. The question is where and why? So to find that out, we're going to do a cylinder leakage test using a compound gauge. We're going to use compressed air through a regulator and see how much uh, air the cylinder will hold. First thing we're going to do is set the engine to top dead center, okay? That's accomplished by rotating the engine and listening for compression. I've got this uh, airline here laced into the number one cylinder, and then as I roll it up, when I come to compression, I should be able to hear it. Oh, it's already started there. Yeah. I'm on the compression stroke. Now you want to get it right at top dead center, and that's pretty critical that you get it right at top dead center, because when you add compressed air, if you're not at top dead center, the engine can roll on you. You can also check it with your distributor, too, when you have the cap off. That's right. We're facing number one on the cap. Okay, so I connect the line going... Get rid of this chart. I connect the line going to the uh, cylinder, to the, line, to the uh, valve, and then I take sharp air right here, push that on there, set the regulator to about 80 pounds, and then I gently open the valve so the hopefully the engine doesn't roll. There we go. Yeah, you got it locked in there. What do you got? Yeah. Let me adjust this regulator here to 80. God, we're in good shape. We're 80 over 72. Good. 80, 80 over, 72. over 72. That's pretty good. Now, it's good cylinder. You, absolutely. That's good and strong. If you had a big loss, uh, that means that the cylinder is not sealed good. Now, what you do is, of course, listen in the carburetor. That'd be the first place. If you had an intake valve that wasn't sealed, and you'd hear the air blowing into the intake manifold, you really would be able to hear it. Yeah, and by the same token, if you go to the exhaust pipe and you hear air coming out of the exhaust pipe, then you've got an exhaust valve that's not sealing properly. That's right. Now, if both the intake and the exhaust are silent, then, of course, the next thing is blow by by the rings. So the rings aren't sealing. Get into the crankcase, either through an oil fill cap or the, the uh, dipstick tube, feel it, listen to it. If there's air rushing there, then you've got excessive blow by by the rings. And then, of course, one other thing is, particularly if you have a performance problem, is listen to the adjacent cylinder. For example, we've got number one pressurized here. I'd put a little hose down number two and listen. If I could hear air in the adjacent cylinder, that means that the head gasket's probably blown or there's a crack between the two of them. Good point. Also, take off the radiator cap. Look for air bubbles. You see air bubbles? Confirms it. That's right. And this is great for, you know, 100, 100 some odd thousand miles. We've got 80 over 70 some odd. This is a good strong cylinder. Let's do the rest of them. Okay. I'll write them down for you. Okay. Okay, takes us to number four, last one. Okay, and we need to roll us to top dead center. Okay, now what I'm doing is I'm recording the results of these cylinders under each one of the spark plugs. That way I can keep track of the results. That's a good idea, and that's a good idea, right to have it, right on that piece of paper right yep. there. Okay, you got it right, right there. Right at top dead center. Okay, right. and you'll notice the ignition rotor is exactly 180 degrees opposite we were at top dead center on number one. Okay, I got to make sure my valve's closed. Compressed air. Open this slowly so we don't roll the engine. And let's see. Adjust this a little bit. Uh, we got 70 over 69. I mean, 80 over 69. Okay. okay. Good solid. 8 over 69. No leakage Okay. There. Well, from the looks of that, Sam, we don't have any problem in the cylinder. We don't have any leakage there. The problem's got to be now in the valve seal because that's the only place the oil can get. That's right. It's time to get that valve cover off. All right. Let me get a hand on it and we'll get this started. This test has proved that we have good integrity in the rings, so most likely the oil is going by the valve guides, by the valve stem seals. Now, this engine's got some wear on it, so if you have a worn valve guide, uh, which in normal will have a little bit of wear, if it's not too bad, putting on new seals on the car will actually slow it down quite a bit. 
If you don't have one of these uh, cylinder leakage gauges or testers, you need to build one or buy one. And if you build it yourself, you need two pressure gauges, a couple of T's, a regulator, and a valve. Most of that stuff's right off the shelf, uh, you know, regular brass hardware. And of course, if you have a compressor, just hook right up there. If you don't have a compressor, I either rent one or you can get a portable air tank with a good sized portable air tank, and that'll uh, help you do the job. Want some help pulling this off? Yeah, let me give me a hand there. These little seals get cooked on here. Yeah, this one's a little tough. Okay, now I got it. There we go. All right. Yeah, let me see. Sometimes this will stick. Hey, that's pretty loose. Yeah, the seals pretty much hold it on. All right. Let's see if we can get her up here. Yeah. Pull this out of the way. All right. Okay. It's good and clean inside. Yeah. What we have here is basically a uh, four-cylinder engine. This is overhead cam, and you've got two rocker shafts. And, of course, you've got a chain that drives the cam on this engine as opposed to a belt on that engine we had earlier this morning. Now, the rubber belts run quieter, but they need to be replaced periodically. These chains are designed to uh, run the life of the engine. They don't always do that, but that's what they're designed for. Also, we don't have any hydraulic lifters here. We have rocker arms. These rocker arms have adjustments on them. So when we get all through putting this job back together, we're going to have to adjust the valves. Adjusting the valves is one of the last things we're going to have to do. Yeah, we've we got, got the tricky part, yes. You know, we've got a lot more to go first. We're going to have to put in the new valve seals first. Before we do that, we're going to take a short break. So stay with us. Yeah, we can just walk around this Let me give you a hand adjustment. here. When installing a new valve cover gasket, it's important to torque the fasteners to factory specifications to ensure proper gasket sealing. Sequence. A good loosening sequence, okay. good. Yeah. Well, welcome back to Shade Tree Mechanic. Well, in order to get to our valve springs, we have to take off the rocker arm assembly first. And the valve springs are right down here. Here's a spring and a retainer right here, number one. So we get this off. That allows you to use the spring compressor in order to remove the spring so we can replace the valve seal. That's right. And this, the uh, rocker arm shaft in this engine, the assembly is held on by these 10 head bolts. So what we're going to do is remove the head bolts in the proper loosening sequence, remove the rocker arm assembly, and then we're going to reinstall the head bolts and tighten them up so we don't disturb the head. This one okay. first? This one first, okay. then that's number two. Okay. Come on, these are tight. All right, number two here. I got it? Yeah. Okay, got that bolt out, and now the rocker arm assembly should work right off. There we go. Now, I'm going to take this rocker arm assembly, which came right off, and uh, I'm going to take the screws here and I'll disassemble it, because we're going to take these stanchions or bridles and put them back on the head, put the head bolts back in it, and tighten it down to keep from disturbing the head. Now, here's the reason why we're doing that. Here's the head bolt. It's real long. If you put it in here, screw it down, there's too much space. It won't tighten up, so that's why we're going to use the bridles in order to take up the space. That way we can tighten down the head, keep it from moving. Right, I'll stop by taking it apart right here by removing this Phillips screw. You have to hold this because it's going to come apart on you. Okay, we'll install the rocker arm stanchions, insert the bolts, and tighten them down so we'll keep from disturbing the head. Here you go, Sam. Thanks, Dave. Now we're going to fill the cylinder with compressed air in order to hold up the valve. Of course, when you do this, you want to have, just like we did with the cylinder leakage test, you want to have the piston up in that cylinder. Now, you don't have to worry about what stroke it's on, like compression or exhaust, because the rocker arms are off, and both valves are closed, the cylinder's perfectly sealed, okay? Also, I got the compressed air in there now. If we should break an airline or something, and the valve falls when we got the spring off, the valve will hit the piston, and you won't lose it out of sight. If you have the, the piston down, then you're defeating the purpose, because you've got to take the head off. Okay, we got our air in the cylinder. Yep. Okay, next thing we do is put, on our put spring our spring compressor. compressor on. Now you need to get down a little farther, Sam. Yeah. Okay, because it's a little difficult. I think you're close. Let me give you a hand here. You got to put some pressure on it. That one's in. Okay. And I think... How does that feel? I think that one is going to be in here. Go ahead, put some pressure on it. Okay. okay. All right. You bringing it up? Yeah, you're on. Okay. And you just wind it up. So you can feel the keepers come loose. Are they coming loose? Yeah, I think they are in this one. Get this over a little bit. That's lucky. Sometimes you have to pop on the top a little bit. Like that. Just be real careful. Real ginger. Okay, give me a little bit more. 
Okay. All right, now I think you I can get, get the keeper. Push it, push it down. There you go. There's one. There's one. Okay, I'll slide the, uh, the keeper around to you. All right, let me. It's where a little magnet like this makes all the difference in the world. You got it? Got it. Okay, the keeper's out. And now we pull out the valve spring. We've got our compressed valve spring in the compressor with the retainer. And right here lives the valve stem oil seal. Dave, you got any new oil seals over there? Got them right here, Sam. It looks like they had a model change, so there's two different sizes. It looks like that could be the larger size. Okay, yeah, that's pretty common. Tell you what, split this bag open, and uh, we'll compare them. I'll pull this old seal off. Okay. All I'm going to do is take a pair of pliers, grab hold of the seal, and pull it right off. It's stuck on top of the guy. Just lever it up, and there it is. And, of course, there it is, hard as a rock. The inside of it's all gone. You can see it flaking apart. That's why it was leaking. Give me a new seal there, Dave. We've got our new seal here, and we've got, uh, of course, we've got grease in it. We're going to push it on over the valve stem. Now, don't push on the stem. Push on the seal. Set it on top of the guide and push it down. There's a little spring there you don't want to disturb. You can use a little socket. They make a little tool, but a socket works fine. A couple of shots. You seat it nice and tight on the guide, and you're all set. All set except for the valve springs. You know, the valve springs sitting here and they get hot and they're crushed up and down. They can lose their shape. They can lose their tension. And valve springs can just give you a whole bunch of problems. Why you got them off, now's the time to check them and replace them if needed. You know, valve springs, like I said, give you drivability problems, including very low power. Sam, we're ready to check them over here. Great, Dave. You know, folks, like anything else, a valve spring has its, its specifications. Now, for these particular valve springs on this particular vehicle, the installed height is an inch and 594 thousandths. That means that I've set my gauge right here for that installed height. Now, when we measure this, this spring should have at least 55 pounds of pressure or more to be good. So we'll put it in, set it in the center, and we'll push down on it and see exactly where we are. And the needle says, let me do this again. I'll zero it one more time. And we're about 65 pounds of pressure. So, Sam, it looks like this spring can be reused. That's great. I'm ready for it, too. See what you're talking about here, folks, when we, when we do something like this. It's a lot of work getting to the valve springs, changing the valve stem oil seal. It's a little tricky dealing with the keepers, but now's the time to take care of it because, again, like I said, worn valve springs will give you drivability problems, make you lose power and economy. And guess what, big guy? What's that? The good news is we've only got seven more to do. <laughs> That's good news. Bring that compressor with you, will you? All right. Well, as you can see, we got a lot more work ahead of us. In the meantime, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll talk about new products. So stay with us. Seven more. After any extensive internal engine work, change your oil and filter to flush out any contamination that may have entered the engine. Well, welcome back to Shade Tree Mechanic. What you got there, pal? Well, you know Daryl Gwynn, the drag racer? Oh, yeah, sure. Well, he, like a lot of other racers, always had a problem of spark plug boots popping off the plugs. That's been a problem for a long time. <laughs> yeah, it is. So, and they've tried to keep it from happening in a lot of different ways. Well, he came up with the boot lock, and this is what it is. It's a plastic or a nylon lock that fits on the base of a spark plug. Mm -hmm. Then it comes up, and it'll capture the boot. You tie it on with a nylon uh, tie lock and it'll hold it on there. That's a great deal. And it's great not only for just race cars, but also off-road trucks and cars, if you're doing that, motorcycles, and any type of, uh, like a marine or a boat. Yeah, that's have great. have a lot of bouncing. So it'll keep them from popping off. This is made by Mr. Gasket. Cost about $32, and you can get it at about any parts store. Look what I got here. This is the Sealrite oil absorption mat. It's all-purpose, and it's made by Automotive Installation out of Patterson, New Jersey. Here's how you use it. <clears throat> you're gonna work on your car, change your oil and filter, work on your motorcycle, spread it out in your garage floor. It's super absorbent. It'll collect any of the oil from the spills when you're done. Clean up your mess. You just fold it up, put it in the bag, and dispose of it. You know, I got a tip for you. If you've already gotten oil on the floor and you didn't use that, take some kitty litter, spread that down, grind it in with a two-by-four, and then sweep it up. It does a great job of absorbing oil. That works great, but you can also take some Portland cement. This is what I use. A little Portland cement dry on the oil in a uh, sidewalk brick, rub it in there, and pull it right up. That's a good point. You know, I'll tell you what, we've got some oil on the floor, too, from doing this job. <laughs> Quite a bit of it. That's right. You wouldn't think for, for a minute that this little valve stem oil seal would cause all the trouble it does, but when these things get worn, it'll cause, especially if the guide's a little worn, it'll cause the engine to smoke and use a lot of oil. And, of course, while you got the valve spring off, we already said this, but get it tested because if the spring's bad, now's the time to replace it because this can cause some problems, too. Sure can. You know, we've done a lot of different types of jobs here in the garage at different skill levels. This is one I would consider 
fairly advanced. So if you're going to try this, make sure you have the right tools, get a service manual, read it thoroughly before you tackle this job because this can be a fairly intricate job. Well, we've run out of time today, so until next time, so long from Shade Tree Mechanic. Bye-bye. You've got a couple more valves to do. Let's get Let's to get work. it done before supper time anyway. You got it. For a copy of today's Shade Tree Mechanic, call 1-800-456-0063 or write to the address on your screen. Refer to the offer number shown. The cost of the tape is $15.95 plus $3.50 shipping and handling. Hey folks, I'd like for you to meet our wives. This is my wife, Karen Bowman. Hello. And this is my wife, Diana Mamolo. Hi, Welcome kiddo. to the garage. What's going on? Thank you. Sam, it's time for you to go home. Uh-oh, Dave. That's the word. You've got seven more to do on your own. Good to see you, Karen. Nice to see you. Brought to you by Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light. It doesn't get any better than this.